The following is distributed by the Berean Call. You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. If you're new to our program, we've begun a series on yoga and the popularity it's having among those who profess to be Christians. Dave Hunt's book, Yoga and the Body of Christ, has been the resource for most of the information we'll be presenting, and Gary will give you the information later on how you can order it from the Berean Call. And for those of you who are not into or particularly care about yoga, but are concerned about the state of the evangelical church, you'll get a rather shocking eye-opener as to how basically Hindu religion has entered evangelical churches, uh, at least in their basements. And uh, so, Dave, last week we gave some quotes from those who profess to be Christians and have started yoga programs that they claim benefit one's Christian spirituality. And they have programs such as Yoga Devotion, which combines, quote, yoga poses with Christian music and thought-provoking devotions, end of quote, and that it, quote, is a way to experience the presence of God through the physical expressions of yoga. Yoga Devotions is just just one of the dozens of programs out there now that attempt to Christianize yoga. Additionally, we're told by these promoters that yoga fits all faiths, not just Christianity. Well, what about yoga as a physical technique for benefiting one's growth as a Christian? Well, Tom, we're talking about two different things, physical and spiritual. Mm -hmm. And God does not respond to physical approaches. In other words, if I bow, if I light candles, um, you know, whatever, whatever, Mm -hmm. physical things, if I have a wonderful cathedral, oh, that would impress God. Uh, The more beautiful, the better. All Mm -hmm. the robes that the the priests wear uh, and so forth. Um, no, physical is not spiritual, and the Bible gives no physical techniques for getting in touch with God. We talked about that last week. That's called divination. Mm-hmm. A divination device is some physical object which serves as a, a focus for God or calls God like a magician's wand. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's some people out there thinking, well, wait a minute here. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, God designs so many things and sets up a way that they are to approach him. H- how is that different? Well, God did not set up yoga. Well, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to explain sure. that, let's say it that way. For sure. Uh, the Old Testament tabernacle and priesthood were specifically... Uh, given by God to represent heaven, Mm -hmm. to represent Christ and his sacrifice and so forth. Right. Christ in the Hebrew uh, means the the anointed one. It's Mm -hmm. the Messiah. Right. And God said to Moses, see that you make it according to what I revealed to you on the mount. So everything, right down to the priest's robes, the instruments, the altars, everything had to be exactly as God uh, gave the pattern. Mm-hmm. Now, he didn't give a pattern for yoga. He did not instruct anything about yoga. And in fact, the Old Testament, uh, the writer of the Hebrews says, this was a, um, sim- it was symbolic, and it was for that time. Right. Uh, looking forward to heaven. It's mm-hmm. a picture, uh, mm-hmm. Hebrews chapter 9. Yeah, so Dave, even those things that have uh, supposedly are Christianity, whether it be rituals, uh, which, which many claim, well, this is just what they did in the Old Testament and we're doing now. For example, we mentioned this time and time again, I, I grew up in the Roman Catholic Church. Talk about rituals, candles, incense, all of these imageries, mm-hmm. even the priesthood, Mm-hmm. is supposed to reflect Old Testament priesthood, but it doesn't, as you said. It, it was for then, not for now. It's a, uh, 
it's an imitation, but it's a false imitation mm -hmm. of, of what God did then. Well, the Old Testament priesthood is not a New Testament priesthood. Now, it will be carried on by unbelieving Jews mm -hmm. uh, right into the millennium. Uh, there will be a millennial temple, uh, uh, but this is for Jews only, and it was looking forward to Christ. It was looking forward to what God would do through Christ. Uh, the Jews, I believe, in the millennium will continue to participate in these uh, ceremonies in the millennial temple. Mm -hmm. As a memorial. Right. But um, it is not Christian, of course, and Christians are not told to practice uh, the law, and the law included all of uh, these forms and, and uh, ceremonies. And so, uh, but further, <laughs> but of course, Tom, yoga would not fit in there. Mm -hmm. We never read of any priests doing yoga, never read that Christ did yoga, and never read that uh, there are any physical exercises that would benefit us spiritually. Uh, Paul contrasts the two, in fact. He says, bodily exercise profits for a little time, that's now, mm -hmm. but godliness is profitable in all things. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference between godliness and bodily exercises. You couldn't say that, well, that's a very godly practice. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way, Tom. Mm -hmm. Well, it, sometimes we fall into these ideas that, that maybe uh, there is some value. <laughs> you, I mean, how many times have you heard, well, cleanliness is next to godliness, so well, keeping yourself physically clean. I've heard that, but it's not in the Bible. <laughs> no, no, but people think it is uh, mm. because they don't check it out or they right. don't, they're not mm. thinking critically about uh, such things. But yoga doesn't fit in there at all. And Dave, we have uh, yoga instructors, uh, m many who are uh, really trying to be true to what yoga is about, historically um, and practically. Well, these are not Christian. No, no. Well, uh, like, you would hope not that they would profess because obviously uh, they don't understand right. yoga if they're trying to integrate it within Christianity. But anyway, these, these people honestly acknowledge uh, in Hinduism and yoga that there are deities involved. But the problem is they claim, well, it's no different than, than the angels. Mm -hmm. Well, well uh, angels are not deities. No, but... Uh, and they're not worshipped as gods. No. And the angel in Revelation, remember, John fell down his feet. He says, don't worship me, worship God. Right. So now we've got false gods in Hinduism, and the Hindus worship them. And this is what yoga is about. It comes out of Hinduism. So now, Tom, you're saying that some Christian yoga instructors, they call themselves Christians, they acknowledge there are deities, but they're like the angels. Right. Well, then they're not deities. Well, in a sense, Paul said that the, behind these idols, behind right. are demons. So, behind every one of them. Right. So, uh, you know, I would concur, but only in this way, that the deities, the, the an angels are fallen angels, and mm -hmm. they're demons. Absolutely. And, of course, the yoga masters writing in their books uh, 3,000 years ago warned that the repetition of the mantra was a call to these entities, these beings, mm -hmm. wh who are demonic, to come into them. And, Tom, you remember cult explosion. And we interviewed, um, well, XTMers. They've been into transcendental meditation. Mm -hmm. And they f were the followers of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. TM is a form of yoga. It's taught by a yogi, and he had his yogi, uh, Dev, the yoga Dev, he was called, right. and uh, who sent him here to teach this. Mm -hmm. And, of course, originally 
it wasn't TM, it was called the Spiritual Regeneration Movement. Right, right. So I will never... But that was too, that was too religious to get it into the places that... Well, he wanted it in the public schools. Right. They wouldn't accept it, so he dishonestly changed the name. But I will never forget uh, the testimony of one former TMer. He said, um, well, uh, when I was initiated by Maharishi, he said he gave me my individual personal mantra. Aying, it was. And... I thought that was great, just for me, chosen for me. And then I was reading a book on Hinduism. Oh, they all eventually get into Hinduism. I was reading a book on Hinduism and, uh, and then later, and there's my secret mantra, and it's the name of a Hindu deity. But this was not supposed to be religious. So he says, I finally, next time I was initiated or whatever, he, you have several levels, I asked Maharishi about this. I said, you told me this was just for me and uh, that it was just a, a sound that would help me relax and develop my full potential. And I, I'm reading a book in Hinduism, and there's my name. And, and furthermore, it's the name of a Hindu deity. Uh, but I thought this was nothing, had nothing to do with religion and spirituality. Maharishi says, yeah, we'll talk about that later. He never did. Uh, find out. But, Tom, you remember some of the people who were interviewed. Suddenly, here's someone in TM. This is yoga. And they're trying to, you know, <laughs> relax. They're repeating their mantra over and over to develop this full potential, this power. And there's a whole lot more to it than that. But anyway, suddenly, there's a demon on each side trying to get into them. Another one says, suddenly, he was up on the ceiling looking down on his body. They were never warned of anything like this. And you remember, Tom, the horrible experiences. Some of these people went insane. Mm -hmm. This was an intensive over in Spain, as I recall, one of them. And uh, you got a whole bunch of them together, several hundred. Maharishi is instructing them. And some of them went berserk. They start throwing furniture around. And then they're seeing, you know, it's a puja. This is right, a the puja ceremony. worship ceremony, worshiping the deities. And when you get initiated into transcendental meditation, you bring some white cloth and you bring a flower. And that goes up there. And then he repeats in Sanskrit, worship for the Hindu deities. Some of them testified, and they never expected this, they saw demons over the puja table. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Tom, it's a very spiritual thing, but it is not the truth of God's Word, mm -hmm. and it opposes the truth of God's Word, and it can get you into demonic uh, possession. Mm -hmm. and, and we talked to a number of them who had experienced that. Dave, the... Uh, this is contrary to the Word of God, but uh, in a sense, it's also what we've been saying is supported by the Word of God. For example, you, you know, people are saying, oh, well, they're talking about demons involved and all of this stuff. Well, we, we, we've documented that, and certainly you mentioned The Cult Explosion, which is a book you did uh, a number of years ago, and I worked on the... Uh, it was a movie back then because they didn't have video, but, uh, but Dave... We can explain simply uh, or support simply what we're talking about. Demons are involved, and we mentioned in previous programs that the goal of yoga is the same as the goal of Hinduism. That is to realize that you are God. Now, where do we find that in the Word of God? Well, first of all, we can go to Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah chapter 14. We have Lucifer in heaven, an angel, mm -hmm. one of the highest of God's creations. All right. Rebelling. He will be as the Most High. He will be as God. Mm -hmm. And then we go to Genesis chapter 3, and we find that the serpent, really Satan, mm -hmm. is having a dialogue with Eve. And in that dialogue, he says, you will be as God. Yeah. Um, if we look so at, that's self-realization, right? Right. If we look at it very carefully, 
um, he says, you see, Satan was not so stupid. Well, he is stupid to rebel, but not incredible so, foolishness. Yeah, because of what he gave up. Right. Unbelievable. But not so stupid as to say, "I will be God." He said, "I will be like the Most High," mm-hmm. and so in one stroke, he did away with monotheism, one God. He initiated polytheism. Well, and then he tells Eve, you can be, he doesn't say you can be God. Uh, And he doesn't even say you can be like God. Now, he's going to be a little bit higher than the rest of them. But you can be as, uh, well, let's... let's It's Elohim. It's the gods. Well, Mm -hmm. let me uh, me read it here. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we're, I can quote it, but I want to be very sure from the Bible. This is Genesis. You want to check us out in this. And we encourage people. The name of the program is Search the Scriptures Daily. And that's our encouragement to all our viewers, listeners, to search the Scriptures. So Dave's going to go to Genesis chapter 3. And, oh my goodness, I can't get chapter 3 to open up. here. Oh, here it is. Okay. Genesis 3, verse, well, in verse 3... The woman says, well, first of all, (laughs) the serpent says, has God said? He says, now, are you sure this was God really talking? And Mm. you sure he understood? That's the way all dialogues begin. Right. That's every cult begins. Has Mm. God said? Well, let me tell you. Uh, The woman said, well, we can eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden... God has said, you shall not eat of it. Then she adds, neither shall you touch it. Well, God didn't say that, lest you die. The serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. See, he's got another word in there. Well, well, it's uh, not actually going to be physical death at the moment. Yeah, but you're on your way to physical death. Mm -hmm. You will die spiritually. And for God doth know, verse 5, that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So um, you can be one of the gods, too. Uh, and, Tom, this was the lie of the serpent. And so how many, how many um, yoga practitioners or instructors are there? They're all going to realize self. Well, we've we got a lot of gods. It's like the Mormons. Mormonism is based on the goal of becoming a god, another mm-hmm. god. So every time you got a thousand Mormons that die and head up there, uh, you got a thousand more gods. So the Mormons literally have more gods than the Hindus. But anyway, Tom, we're talking about yoga. And this opens the door. The purpose of it was to open the door to a spiritual dimension uh, that is based upon the lies of the serpent in the garden. Dave, uh, just going back to uh, these techniques, uh, many people are probably aware that there is a, they may not get a, uh, uh, be initiated with regard to a Hindu deity, receiving a Hindu deity, Mm -hmm. yet uh, there's the mantra that most uh, yoga instructors uh, Present and that's the mantra or the chanting of Om. What about that? Well, this uh, Om is supposedly the universal vibration, mm-hmm. uh, and that will bring you into union with God. That's part of it. Uh, and uh, again, Tom, there's no way you can Christianize this. Christians to say this is Christian and to call it Christian yoga and even to say Jesus practiced it. You know, Tom, this we, we mention it often. This program is called Search the Scriptures Daily. Why do we search the Scriptures? Because this is the authoritative Word of God, inerrant, sufficient, the Bible claims to be. It Mm -hmm. proves itself by prophecies fulfilled, hundreds of prophecies, none in any other religious book. There are no prophecies for Hindus or Buddhists or or Muslims and so forth. 
All right, so we know this is God's Word. Well, then we're going to stick with the Bible. We're going to study the Word of God. We want to know what did God say? You know, remember when I was on the uh, radio show and and the talk show host says, oh, we got a group of experts here in the studio to, uh, to you know, talk about God. And I said, and I'm coming in by phone, well, how do you get to be an expert on God? But anyway, uh, wouldn't it make more sense if instead of sitting around talking about God, why don't we find out what God said about us? Well, this is the Bible. Mm -hmm. So let's go to God's Word, find out what He says about us. And that's, uh, this is our authority, Tom. Right. It doesn't come out of the Hindu Vedas, which are contrary to the Word of God. Dave, you quote in your book, uh, the book is Yoga and the Body of Christ. Uh, you quote a typical message on a chat line from somebody who claims to be a Christian. This person says, Jesus Christ himself taught a form of yoga, but usually Christians just don't get it. I'm a Christian myself and practice yoga the way Jesus taught it. It's sad that usually my fellow Christians don't understand this stuff, and I'm accused of blasphemy. When you mention yoga and Jesus in the same sentence, you're going to get quite a lecture. Well, we don't have to give them a lecture. All we have to do is just what you said, Dave. Show us in the scriptures. You claim to be a Christian then uh, go to the authority of the Christian faith, which is the Word of God, the Bible, and give us this information. But he can't, Dave. So how does he come up with these ideas? To make the statement that Jesus practiced yoga, he doesn't give us chapter and verse. Of course, it's not in the Bible. Uh, Tom, and I'm only, um, you know, guesstimating, but it probably it comes from this belief that Jesus, between the ages of 12 and 30, he spent that time in India studying under the Hindu masters. And he would say, well, that's where Jesus practiced mm -hmm. yoga. But there's not one scintilla of evidence. Uh, nothing in history, nothing in the Bible, certainly. In fact, the Bible contradicts it. Jesus didn't say it was his yoga master. As Maharishi says, it was Guru Dev who sent mm -hmm. me. Jesus didn't refer to to the great yoga instructors, Jesus said it was his Father in heaven who sent him, and he came to die for the sins of the world. Altogether different.